Hello friends, and welcome to a new episode of the Just Another Mindset podcast. We need a paradigm shift if it comes to our economic and social systems. Let us drive this change together. The Just Another Mindset podcast shares inspiration and tangible techniques on how to create seismic shifts in an outdated system, collectively and for individuals alike. My name is Ismail, and each week I bring to you a relevant conversation, message or theme that will not only entertain you, but help you to change towards a more meaningful and satisfying life. Get encouraged by listening to successful thought leaders, inspiring individuals and impressive change makers. Change from within will last and create positive results for all of us. Let us get inspired and embrace collective changes for the better. In today's episode, I have the great joy to talk to Runa Magnus. Born, raised and living in her native country Iceland, Runa is a lifetime entrepreneur and that since 1988. First in partnership with her role model in life, her mother, in a wholesale company, Bergers. A business that she sold in 2006 and transformed her career into a personal development and leadership world. Since 2007, she has been dedicating her work to the personal leadership and development field, supporting entrepreneurs, leaders and politicians as their personal life and leadership coach. She is the author of two, the third one in the making, books, and she is an international sought-after speaker and recognized expert on topics such as out-of-the-box leadership, personal branding, diversity, and inclusion. In this episode, you will hear about what you can learn when rolling around Iceland. We talk about the importance of play and why it takes a lot of courage to start working on yourself. You will learn why a life without thinking in boxes is so liberating. For yourself, but also for all of us as a collective. We discuss the illusion of gender and how we can heal a lot of our troubles with humor once we became aware of them. You will take away some thought-provoking ideas and hear about positive changes happening today. And with that, Una, a warm welcome to the Just Another Mindset podcast. And my first question for you today is, how do you feel and what is on your mind? Whoa, what a fabulous question. I can tell you I'm feeling really, really good. I'm feeling really, really good. And um, the reason for that is my mindset, actually. Um, do you want me to go deeper? Or just do you want to, do you want to give the audience just hanging in there? So what, what is he talking about? Is it just talking about positive, you know, uh, positive psychology or whatever? No, I'm not talking about that. I am, in fact, what I'm talking about is the, when I discovered, and it actually, I just, just discovered it this summer, to be honest, um, as I was driving in the countryside of, in Iceland in the early morning, and, and all of a sudden, I just got this just wave, just like a rush over me. And I said out loud, oh, wow, I am in love with my life. And my partner who was with me in the car, he started to laugh and he said, well, that, that's a good thing, you know, and, you know, where, where do I go into that? And I'm like, oh, hang on a minute, it's not about you. I'm just realizing how life is beautiful when we choose to see the beauty. That is indeed beautiful. And, it, and that does mean we have to slow down to see the beauty. And in fact, you gave me a key word, which is driving in Iceland. And I thought in order to give a little bit of a context, my second question would be, why is the 22nd of June in 2020 a very special day in your life and potentially even for whole Iceland? Ah, yes. 
Oh, wow, you had the date. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, that was, um, that, that is so true. You know, remember those times when we were going through this thing called the pandemic? And um, me and two of my female friends, uh, we kind of like we stood in the, you know, in front of the, the question. So, okay, everything that we're used to is not going to be at the doorsteps. And we also stood from in front of the, 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 the fact that so many of our friends from abroad had planned to be in Iceland that summer. And they were not able to do that as well in 2020, you know, it was, everything was more or less, more or less locked. And um, one of my friends is actually in the tourism industry. She's an owner of a whale watching company. So she was really, you know, facing this fact. So we got this crazy idea. Why don't we roll around Iceland on an electric scooters, the three of us, and we um, videotape the journey. What my my other friend is a she's a documentary film film documentary uh, owner of a film documentary company, and we broadcast that on Facebook and on the internet and we basically what we wanted to do was since our friends abroad couldn't come to Iceland we would bring Iceland to them by doing that and um, that's what we did so for 14 days the three of us we were in fact rolling around Iceland Iceland is about similar size as the um, state of Kentucky if you look at it in, in comparison in, when, on the size of the country and um, well originally we wanted to do that on an electric scooters uh, that was actually <laughs> that was the original idea and when we got the idea none of us had ever stepped on an electric scooters we've never tried it ourselves we just thought the idea was so fun and then when we started to work on the product project and we contacted a, a rental here in Iceland, said, would you be, you know, up for this, uh, working with us on that? And they like, yeah, hell yeah, we would love that to be able to provide you with the scooters and, and, and batteries and everything so that we can do this. And then, um, so we were all into this and really excited. And then we found out it's illegal to drive the electric scooters on the Icelandic highways. And although we have in Iceland uh, today quite a, you know, inside of villages and, you know, the small cities that we have, we have uh, paths for cycling and, 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 you know, right paths for cycling and all of that. We don't have that in the, in the motorways. And, and I, I have to say, I'm really happy that it was illegal because I don't think I could have done that, <laughs> to be honest. But what we did, in, in fact, what we decided to do is that, okay, we can't roll this way. So how, you know, thinking outside of the box, how do we then still do that? How can we still roll around Iceland? Because what is, a, what is legal to do is it's legal to cycle on the highway. So what we did was... We all bought ourselves some electric bikes and we, so when we were doing the circle, we would be on the bikes one at a time. One would be biking and one, one driving and one taking video shots and then we take turns. And um, so every time we would, we would go into some of the villages, we would take out the, the electric scooters and roll around in the in the town whatever we were and this was this was just so much fun before we knew it there were people all over the planet who was watching what we were doing and was we we managed in this very simple way to um create a lot of joy in other people's hearts and that's mainly what we wanted to do not to mention the joy that it brought to us being able to do that and be the three of us together we didn't even know would we be you know pulling each other hair after two weeks together like that 
But no, we actually <laughs> we managed fine to do that. So roll around Iceland. Yeah, you can, um, if you go to Facebook, you can find um, our page there. And I don't know. You, did you see some of the videos there? I actually did. And I can definitely recommend that. Um, it seems like you had a lot of fun and it seems like you created a lot of joy. And thank you very, very much for sharing that story. And I actually have two follow up questions. One you partially answered already, but it is what did you learn about yourself, about the country or about anything else while doing this trip and using your out of the box thinking to make it happen? What I learned, what was a pleasant surprise in some way was seeing how, you know, the di diversity of things that you can do in Iceland and how the, the entrepreneurial mindset, how, how uh, farmers have transformed their cow shed into a, an event where they have restaurant on the on the top and you can see down you can look down to look at the cows and then the cows are being um milked and fed and and you can see the organic way of living in the countryside and you can test taste the product uh, seeing seeing all of these entrepreneurial mindsets that have sometimes in their lives thought ah I, I, I want to create a life that is um, maybe more fulfilling or I want to create a life that I can be sharing in a different way of what I'm doing, talking about farmers as an example, not only, you know, um, growing their whatever they, the product that they're growing, but being able to share it in such an authentic, personal way. Um, so many of the farmers in here in, in Iceland, they, are, they have bed and breakfast. Um, they are actually renting out or they have they've built some extensions so that they can rent out to, to visitors who are coming. So all of that was a um, pleasant surprise. It's not that I didn't know. It was more of when you experience something, then you, then you really see that. And, 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 and then how, um, how we have... You know, one of the things that we have here in Iceland is all the the geothermal hot water and the uh, the volcanoes and the geysers and all of that that we have, and how we're using that in such a different way. I mean, such a different way. Um, and for me, as as being the one who's been really helping people to discover their personal brand, what is really their X factor, as I call it. Um, and then seeing how, and I always felt just to finish that sentence, I always felt that when we as humans, um, give ourselves the space to figure out, you know, who am I really? And what is the, how can I share the gift that I was born with in this world? It, it can be really complicated because it's so close to us. And we don't see our gifts. And now when you go and you look at nation as Iceland or the nation that you are living in, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, which nation that is. But just that you tap into, you start to look at what do I take for granted because I'm just so used to it. That is your gift. You take your personal gift for granted. What is, in, in, here in Iceland, what do we, we take the hot water for granted? We did that for years. Wow, in the energy crisis that we're living in, in the world is living in today, uh, that is such a, you know, we're, we don't take that for granted at all. And now using the, 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 the hot water and the natural, natural resources in a way that is sustainable and it is um, not only in, in tourist industry, but in so many, many other industries, that creates the economic wheel and i know i'm going back and forth from country to an individual i hope i'm not it's not too um, complicated but what i'm just trying to say is i think that i, I when when uh, we as a nation in iceland started to uh, really 
the tourist industry started to blossom, I think a lot of it had to do with exactly that, just seeing who we really are and how we can um, cre tell people about the little quirky things like listening to our English accent, which you're doing right now. It's Icelandic, you know, and and that we, be, you know, a good majority of uh, the nation believes in elves and trolls, trolls and, you know, all of these things that are just kind of like maybe different to another nation. And then how do you, how do you, how do you come, how do you talk about it? How do you communicate that? And the same thing goes for us as individuals. What is unique? What, how can I differentiate myself in the marketplace and what I'm doing in a way that I feel that I'm in my flow, in the way that I feel that I'm sharing my gift, in the way that I feel that I'm, I'm, I'm contributing some way um, to my community or to my family or to, to, my, to my country or, or to the world. No, and I must say, I can say that you did a tremendous job because what you touched on, the diversity of the country, is what I also really liked about this vlog. You visited entrepreneurs, you went out into the landscape, and it was a very nice combination of different viewpoints on the country. And if the goal was to have fun and joy and to give people a perspective on Iceland, it's definitely a success. So thank you very much for doing that. And another question that came and comes to mind is what role does play have in your life and how much do you use it in your daily being oh isn't that a beautiful question i would like to do more of it and i admit that i do sometimes have to remind myself that um i can have more of it when i remembered it um it has a huge impact in my life when I play I know that my energy just goes up and I know that what I am emulating into the world is is positive and and is bringing me more, even more joy and when I do that when I manage to do that um I can also I know that I can bring in a little spark of joy in other people's hearts around me. So another form of sustainability. Una, how do you remind yourself of playing or being playful? And yeah, do you do that with friends? Maybe you have some stories to share. I, rem I, I do this with daily intentions. So I'm a daily meditator. And when I meditate in the morning, I can meditate up to maybe an hour and a half sometimes. And it is during those uh, deep meditations that I set the intention for both. Both love, I both love to play with the future version of me. Who, whom do I want to become? And play with what, what does that feel like to be that person? And, and then second, the, the third thing is, what do I need to do? Or who do I need to be is more the question that I like to ask myself these days. Who do I need to be to become the future version of me? And that is, that is what normally comes up quite often in my mind when I'm asking myself these questions in a deep meditative state is to be um, grateful, to be uh, joyful and, and the joy comes really in that what I started off with saying becoming in love with your life it's that is, it's noticing and so it, it, for me it really is combined together but it's noticing, noticing, um, uh, noticing 
just the ordinary things in your life um, and just having that tiny moment of deciding what how do I want to react um, and being able to choose that which doesn't always happen but wow wow when we have tiny more control over our reaction the difference it makes it oh it is such a difference because hey we're all we're all acting react and reacting every single day on something and and it's normally always the same thing again and again and again we're just yeah ground out day mm. now becoming aware of it and showing gratitude also for the small things in life definitely agree to that and i can see that you also show that gratitude and it was interesting because you said a couple of months ago let's just say you realized that you have this beautiful life and i really like the concept of you playing with your future self and the picture that you have so if you would ask yourself who do you want to become or who is future runa And you say you have such a beautiful life right now. Is that the present moment that you want to preserve to a certain extent? Is there still something that you would like to change? I don't know if something comes to mind. Yeah, that is, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so here's the thing. It's a, it's a really good question because you can go, okay, I'm really grateful, happy with my life. Uh, I don't want to change anything. You could be there. And in many ways, I am that. Um, what, what in the future version of me is, it's more for me in, in those, you know, lately, it's been more for me about um, how, how can I share um, more? How can I um, give more people the opportunity to look at their lives and see how they've been socially constructed to to be someone because they were born in this country, because they were born this gender or this race or in this religion or faith or whatever it is that has that that is has been creating the I call it the box the box that we or the box says that we we live in and the society has placed us in and and we we put ourselves in as well um so the the, the future version of me is is really doing it's really um having an impact and helping people just to I mean, I will be super happy, super happy if there are people out there who have in their lives maybe heard the podcast like this one and that just make them think, wow, what am I doing today that is just, I'm just doing like without thinking about it. I'm just doing the same thing again and again and again and again. I wake up in the morning and take my, my the same foot that I put out of side of my bed. I, I put my socks on and the same, you know, left first, then right. You know, I, I do my everything that I do in every single day is more or less the same. And I'm reacting the same way. I'm cursing in the traffic. I'm, I'm, pissed off of this one and you know all of these things that just is our day-to-day -day life and if I manage to just plan just create a little space in their box just expand their box based thinking in a way that, that hey why why is he saying that there is something more there is definitely nothing more in my life you know if that's the mindset And I managed in my in my talk and in the out of the box conversations that we are doing and, and all of those things that I'm doing, if I just manage to expand that box a tiny bit, have a tiny more oxygen being flowing in there that gives that person a little moment of, hmm, what is he really talking about? I want to know more. And they 
they move themselves towards that more, then I feel that I've shared my gift in the world. And I feel then that um, I have helped another person to move forward in their lives, to become in love with their life. Let us take a little bit more detailed look at those boxes. And one question, Runa, would be, why is it so easy or why are we so used to think and act in boxes? Oh, it's our brain. It's our brain. We are wired. We are literally wired to do either or. And it originally comes from um, its fight and flight mode. Originally, it's really about, you know, there's a lion out there and I need to be safe with my family or whatever, or just my, I need to be safe. So it literally comes from that. And, and we need it. And no doubt about it. We need, uh, we need to be able to do that and make a quick decision. You know, if someone is going, you know, um, you're walking alone in, at night and there is someone that is going to attack you, you need to be able to be really quick. We're actually quite a few of us actually quite, a, you know, they, we freeze because of it, but that's another concept. But what basically we need this, what, what we are so used to is to, and the society often has, well, I would like to say at least a big part of the society, at least the one that I live in, has really been putting focus on uh, for the past for decades, really since the industrial industry really started, to to look at okay, everyone goes through the education. This is how you go through the education. You go in there's classrooms. You're supposed to learn here. You learn math. Here you learn Icelandic. Here you learn uh, how to write. You know here you learn how to read. You know all of these things, and it's all box based, and you you immediately you've been you're being put into a box. I mean if you are creative one as a child and you love to do arts you kind of like I think in many cultures you get that "Mm, yeah yeah you're really good at art yeah well I don't really know about that that's not actually going to be a good thing for you as you grow up you kind of like even though no one says that directly to you you can get the picture and you're like oh yeah but you get that one or no one in our family it has ever been an artist and we don't know anyone who's been successful as an artist. So why don't you really focus on your math, you know, and you, you get that picture. So you start to do something that is not maybe what your heart is te- really makes your, your heart sing, but you start to do it because that's what you see around you. And in the first seven years of our lives, our brain is basically constantly, it's like a, like a sponge. It's just trying to understand all the things that are happening around us and how do I function in this society, et cetera, et cetera. And um, so we slowly go into this phase of, you know, we without even thinking about it because everyone around us is doing it and we don't think anything of it, do we? But then we see it there. We call it sometimes, um, you know, when we're around 40, that we go through the states in our lives that we, um, you know, you divorce or you get another, you, you get another lover or whatever you do. And it's often about this, you're looking for something else. So you thought that you fulfilled everything that was placed on you, the society placed on you, you know, I see many of, of uh, women today, they've they like ticked all the boxes. They've been told since they were young, you know, you need good education. You need to go through what, through the university and you do all that. And now there are more women in most Western countries. There are more women graduating from universities than men. Um, but they're not happy. So somewhere down the road, I'm, I'm wondering, did we lose? Did we lose who we were born to be? Did we put our focus more on who, what the society is telling us to be than what is really my gift? What, what is the gift that I was given when I was born on this planet and have I forgotten? Or have I really space, given myself space to figure it out or even just to 
um, pondered over what could that gift be and is that would what would my life look like if I would start to open up for that gift and I allow that to shine and that's that journey that's life's journey to and and I don't think I don't think you ever graduate from that it's an ongoing process right and I believe it also takes quite a bit of courage to step outside those boxes and to open up your senses and to I always like to say step take steps to the side I don't think you ever go back but you may take a step to the side and you will not have the economic safety anymore or you will have to change your circle of friends or you will have to change where you live or this all may happen if you actually start looking outside of those boxes and a question while you were talking that came to mind you talked about that we or some of us have forgotten the gift that we have been given to be on this planet is that one of the major limitations to thinking inside the box let's just say that we are so busy with complying with the different boxes that we forget what makes us happy really and what we can use to give back also to society i think it's it's one of the big one it's really one of the big one because what happens when we become, you know, whatever you put your focus on will grow. Whatever you put your focus on will grow. So when your focus is, I need to, to survive on this planet. I need to be better than this one. I need to be richer than that one. I need to have a bigger car than this one. I need to have a bigger house than this one. I need to go more often... Uh, you know, I, I need more uh, designer wear, you, you know, whatever it is that you, you tell yourself that you need. It is very often in comparison with someone else. And you've taken that, uh, the society has, you know, we have all the social media, you, you know, I don't really have to talk about that. We, we, I think we all know that. Where does that come from in many ways? You know, it comes from social media, it comes from an upbringing, it comes from whatever. When I don't know, I have not met anyone that talks about being really happy unless, unless they've gone through some internal, internal jobs, internal work and discovered more of um, basically taking, like, lay, taking the layers off that those those masks that we put on ourselves to be safe in this in the environment but peeled them off and started to see what is my cause and and i remember i remember maybe 30 years ago um people that i met who were on that journey and were taking their masks off and were peeling it off and they talked about meditating and they talked about mindfulness and you know they were put in the a little bit of the cuckoo box like ooh they're really strange this is a strange one you know and, and they were judged today that has changed enormously it almost turned around you see so many I hear so many people talk about they meditate or they do mindfulness exercises or they do yoga or they do something to help them be more in the present moment. And it's almost coming to the, the, the part that people that don't do that, talking about boxing, they are the cuckoo ones. <laughs> um, which I actually don't understand why they need to be that but sometimes you hear that in the conversation I think it's just so important wherever where if you have boxed yourself being not that person or being or boxing yourself that you are the person that meditates whatever it is just that you give yourself that that time to 
think so how is this working for me so far what I'm doing is it giving me happiness and joy is it fulfilling do I wake up in the morning with a smile on my face looking forward to the day ahead or am I waking up in the morning and and actually finding it a little bit dreadful the day ahead you just look inside look ask yourself those questions and if you don't like the answer then there are luckily there are millions of people out there in the world today who have some sort of a tool have something that they can help you with and it really takes just um asking someone um do you know someone who can coach me do you know a good coach do you know of someone who is a good healer if you need if you have wounds you want to heal do you know someone who is good in teaching meditation you know that is basically or you google it if you don't want to ask anyone you basically have it all in front of your tits it's for you to reach out for that and 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 take that those steps and you are so right what you just mentioned about sometimes it is the group of people that we are in and i always find that to be so true and regularly looking at what are the five people that I am surrounding myself with because I am part of that energy that they are all emulating and if I'm not happy could that be that I'm in a, the wrong group uh, that I am and and that does not have to mean that you have to say bye to all of them it just means that you step into another type of people or you kind of like it could be an old friend that used to always used to lift you up but somehow life pops in and you lost contact or, or whatever you know reach out to that old friend see what he or she is doing you know the i think sometimes we complicate this but it can be it's, it's so often those little things that we can do and it makes all the difference and what i hear una is for so many things it starts with awareness and then taking deliberate choices do i want to meditate do i want to go for a walk in nature do i want to spend 16 hours in an office per day but it starts with that awareness of who i am and what is it that gives me joy or success or whatever your metric that you want to deal with be is awareness key i think i believe awareness is absolutely the essential first key but it's not enough it's not enough i i'm very aware that if i eat too much chocolate I get heartburn and it's not good for my waistline either. So if I don't do anything about that awareness, if I just keep eating chocolate, but I'm very aware of it that I well, I shouldn't have that chocolate, you know, it's not good for me, but I I keep on doing it, then that awareness is not doing me much, is it? Hmm. So awareness should become acting. It's it yeah it's self awareness and the second step is self leadership taking the taking action taking um being firm teaching your body who you want to become that's really what i feel we need to be doing more of because our body does the same thing again and again and again but by slowly setting you know setting the intention that what who you want to be you know eating healthy if that is the case talking about chocolate um chocolate can be healthy it's just if you eat too much of it <laughs> and, and the type of chocolate yeah uh but but taking that step forward and and say, okay i i my intention is to be healthy my intention is to be healthy mindfully spiritually physically 
And that is my intention. And I'm aware that I do have certain habits, certain rituals that could prevent me from, from being that healthy person. And so make doing those small things like um, um, deciding on one thing that I, I felt was really good for me on that one was that I decided my sweets, my alternatives from chocolate would be um, berries, blueberries, raspberries. Uh, that would be, and I basically just told myself, Again and again and again, that's what I, that's what you love to do. That is your sweet time. That is your candy time, you know, and to teach my body to love that and be just craving that just as much as I would be craving chocolate. Mm. And also acknowledging that it is, again, a process of change. And maybe we can use that. It's not from black to white. I eat chocolate or I don't eat chocolate or I eat sweets or I don't eat sweets. But you can maybe start with a lot of chocolate and acknowledge it's too much and say, okay, I will substitute with berries every other day. And then in a year, probably you're only with berries and then you figure something out for yourself. Yeah. Right? And so you don't the have chocolate to becomes too sweet for you or something. You go, Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Like I, th yeah. Because that, that, that is not that, then you're not really living in that box, are you? Then you're more flowing and we are, we're not always the same every single day, are we? We do have our ups and downs and there are th different things that are coming in our way. So just acknowledging that, ah, today I'm really craving chocolate <laughs> and knowing that it's not good for me. Um, that one bite is okay. And it's fine and I'm going to just really enjoy that and I'm going to go for more berries. And I'm going to allow myself to do more of that. Um, and here's another thing that I, I really think that's the third step in the process because we already deal, dealt with two of them, self-awareness, self-leadership. And the third step in living a life that you were basically, what well, we're talking about, a living a life uh, expanding escaping even our boxes and that is um self-love and uh, self-love i want to particularly talk about not beating up the earlier version of ourselves to in you know i think do you, do you recall when you've done something and, and then your mind goes, oh, I always do that. I'm so stupid. Why do I always go again for that chocolate? You know, and you say, oh, why am I so stupid? I know I shouldn't eat that chocolate. That's beating up the earlier version of yourself. And uh, what my, um, my co-partner uh, with the normal boxes, the transformational movement, Nicholas Haynes, he has these, he has created these questions. He called conscious questions. And what he talks about, which I just think is so brilliant. He says, you know, our subconscious mind always answers questions always. So when our mind comes up and we, the old version of ourselves, like, why do I, why am I so stupid? Why am I so stupid? I know I shouldn't be eating this chocolate. Why am I doing that? And when that question pops up, your subconscious mind is going to go find the answer and say, well, I will tell you why you're so stupid. You're so stupid because, and you start to go down the rabbit hole, really beating up the earlier version of yourself, how you never ever managed to stay away from chocolate. How people around you have always placed chocolate in front of you. You, you know, you kind of like, you, you go there. And that's not exactly going to help you. With the conscious questions, and I highly, highly, highly recommend that people go and just Google conscious questions, Nicholas Haynes, Five Institute. Um, he would say something like, um, why is it okay to eat chocolate 
occasionally. Right. Hmm. Okay, another question. Why is it okay to eat chocolate on occasion? Well, it's okay maybe to make that as a as a celebration thing. You know, I've done something. I'm I'm proud of myself today, or I I you know I'm, I want to I want to do that on a on a special occasion. You've turned your mind from what sort of idiot am I, and found all the reasons why you're so such an idiot into hmm okay well what why is it why is it okay to be a leader and fail and you go wow you're talking about leadership i was in chocolate so what do you mean you know ah self-leadership mm. your mind goes somewhere else so you can ask when you start to train yourself with asking yourself the questions that can move you from going down spiral and move you, help your body and help your mind and spirit to become more the person that you want to be. Those little, those little tools are really, 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 hand, you know, um, a good one. And then, so we just so that I finish those four things because I'm on the track that uh, I think is important that we we mentioned the fourth one, which I think is really important. And that is the fourth thing is having humor for yourself. We human beings are hilarious. We are hilarious, really. I mean, we're born with a gift and the society that was formed thousands of years ago is putting something on us, no matter when you're born. And we've been told you have to be this or that because you're this gender. Or, oh, here's a boy, can't wear, a ch- can't wear trousers, can't wear skirts or, or dresses, can only wear trousers. You know, whatever, whatever the rule is. And we're all upset if something happens, if that boy starts to wear, wants to wear skirts. That's really, you know, a big thing. When really it's all about, we're, we're boxing him in just because he's a, he's, he's a boy. Then he could not wear, that means that he's a trans or that means that he's, he's not, he's not okay or, or whatever. I mean, it is, it is humorous, isn't it? Don't you find that humorous? We, we create all these boxes. It's all created by us. And here's the big, big, big thing. None of these boxes are real. They're all made up. So how about we laugh at them because they are hilarious. I mean, they're stopping you from sharing your gift. They're, they are preventing you from becoming in love with your life. Um... It's a play. So how about you start to create, be the, both the actor and the director of that play. So let's take that thought. And we talked about self-awareness, self-leadership, self-love and humor for yourself. And I guess we all got a better understanding why for ourselves, it's good not to think and act in boxes. Let's transform that and say, how will society overall also benefit if we understand that those boxes are imaginary? And I have a hinge and this is that for me, self development and collective changes are somewhat intertwined and are reliant on themselves. But if we say, we accept that those boxes are self-made and not self as in you and I, but self as in society. What can yeah we have or how can we flourish better if we get rid of our box thinking, not on an individual, but also on a societal level? I think it's already happening and it's happening in various places. It's happening uh, if I look at, um, if we look at, um, if you look at, for example, if you take the, um, the journey, the customer journey, when you are, um, 
you're a business, you have a business and, and you're selling a, a product to your clients, a customer journey, the, today is a quite an, a common um, threat to use the omni-channel, what it's called, meaning every, it touches on everything. The customer is there and what the customer needs needs to be in every single angle of the of the customer journey for for that product and that service and that brand to to stand out for that for the client that means today also that so many of the ways that we are used to do marketing research by saying uh, age group uh, race religion uh, what has this person um, you know the marital status and etc etc all the co common thing that we have been using that is all changing that is all changing because even though you can find um you can find very very different persons in the same ice group with the same background with the same race or same uh, gender but they as individual are totally different so we're seeing that even those metrics that we have been using, that is changing dramatically. And as we, we want, obviously, business-wise, we want to be able to reach out to our clients and that our clients are faithful to our brand, whatever the brand is, whether that is you as an individual or your company brand, that you start to think then differently. And that means... You know, that is just one thing that I'm seeing is already happening. Another thing that I also see is happening, and that is this, um, is this um, awareness towards leadership um, and how many organizations are starting to use this. They're just, I feel that many of them are really just in the starting place because the old habit, the old traditions, the, what once was is still, still very much playing in the background. But there is a certain amount of awareness that has, uh, that has risen over the past uh, maybe a decade or so. It takes a long time. This has to do with, uh, and I want to point that out, this has to do with, for an example, um, workplace and 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 gender equity uh that that um businesses are seeing that they in order to get the, the most out of their human resources they have to let go of their unconscious biases and not you know that that many women as an example there that have gone into the you know the past decades and more women coming into the workplace and women, there are more women in leadership roles, although they're not not enough, but there are more than there was maybe five decades ago. Um, that unconscious biases are being a topic that I see more and more organizations are at least willing to tackle a tiny bit. I'm not saying that they're fully in there, but at least... It is a topic they are willing to talk about to a certain extent. And I think that topic opening up for our unconscious thoughts and reactions and our unconscious biases is what the 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 the, the boards, the the executive teams, the, the leaders out there need to be more aware of um, because they, we will, as human beings, we will judge another person by their looks, by whatever it is from that. And it is from our background. It is from who we are and, and what we're used to. And just being aware of that, taking the leadership, self-leadership of changing that not to beat up the earlier version of ourselves and just laugh at ourselves when we think that a man can't be a caregiver and a woman can't be um, a world leader. Those are the things that we really need to think about. Because if we are, as I believe this very firmly, that if we are uh, 
that it doesn't matter if you have a company of 10 people or you have a company of a thousand people. If you're going to continue doing as you have been doing, you're not getting the most out of your people. And as what we're looking at today, um, if I look at just Europe, I, you know, just recently gone through the McKinsey report around uh, e-commerce and retail, just that industry, if we just take that industry, there are three focuses that the McKinsey is, is talking about that businesses have to do if they're going to survive. And one of the biggest one is skills and talents. So if we are not going to do something different with how we act and react as leaders in, 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 in the business world, our businesses are going to fail. So it, we, we actually, we are, I think we're being forced into that. So just being for any leaders that are, that is listening to that and has a business and wants that business to grow, taking the initiative to put together your group, get someone outside outside your 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 group to have that conversation and open up for that conversation for your blind spot, for your unconscious biases is absolutely one of the crucial steps to take because I I see this everywhere that we are treating each other by old programs that probably were created by our great 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 grandparents and was fine during the times they were up they were alive but not working for us today and that's why i also believe that we are at the beginning of such transformation we have more awareness but the rules are somewhat still the same. But we can also remember ourselves that remind ourselves that we are the ones making the rules for our ten people company, but also for our ten thousand people company. And you've touched ground on quite a few interesting topics where what I would like to detail a little bit, and that is this unconscious biases and gender. And I know you also use the notion, let's just call it, of masculine and feminine energy. So I would love to hear your thoughts on that. I actually don't believe there is anything that is masculine or feminine. <laughs> because that is one of the social construct. We're just energies. Why are we complicating it by boxing it into something being feminine and something being masculine. We're just energies and our energies, um, they are, it can, we can show up as if our energies, and now I'm, I'm, I'm referring to the ancient Chinese energy uh, philosophy, um, water, wood, fire, earth, metal, the five energies there. And when you look at the energy, the profiles that people have taken from the vitality test, which actually measures your energies, there is absolutely nothing that can that you can see in those profiles that indicates that that person is male or a female, or non-binary for that matter. It just you don't see, you can't see any, any anything that has to do with your gender. It is how the social the social construct that is added on that, that is the gender bit. And we can see that in, um, there's a book uh, written by Gina Rippon, um, a professor in the, the UK called The Gendered Brain. And I recommend reading that book. She really uh, has been looking at studies, 20,000 studies in fact. and. It really depends on how, you know, if you are looking through it through the lens of a gender, you see the gender. If you're looking through it with, with non-gender um, glasses, you see no gender. So it really depends on how you look at it. So if you go into, um, I think this, is, this, is, um, this can be difficult for many people to, to just get their heads around it because it's so close to them. Uh, they're so used to this. They're so used to all of this. But um, I want to 
just ask ask two questions um, to the audience if they find that um, difficult to to think about so just do you know a woman who is forceful straightforward a go-getter does things why do you expect that person to be kind and caring at the same time or do you know a man who is loving kind caring why do you expect him to be able to let's say uh, change electricity in your home or do some woodwork or lead a company it's all our unconscious biases and we're judging people what are what are the consequences when we judge people by these stereotypical gender roles are we getting the best out of them or are we waiting for a pill to cure them or could we actually just pay attention to who they really are and what how we can make them flourish let's try to make that a little bit tangible i think the rationale behind putting genders in that case into boxes male and female and why this is not helping us is understood well, you talked about your mindset in the beginning and i would be interested how do you or how can maybe also the audience start creating a non-gender mindset or a non-gender approach on life if there is such a thing uh, we go back to the awareness noticing this is a topic that um, is so so interesting to tackle I've been doing what I called out of the box conversations with Rona Magnus with groups of people I did one recently where I was in Malta with a group of business and professional people uh, women there were just women there uh, in Malta and we were we were having deep dive conversations around motherhood as an example why why do we expect mother women to love children uh, why do we judge them if they don't why are we taking that role who says we have to just habit ritual society expects us why do we even like in Malta they have this beautiful daycare system if um, the mothers are working uh, full time outside of the home the childcare is free um, why is it free if the mothers are working full time Were they, are they all Virgin Marys? I mean, doesn't it take two to count tango? Um, absolutely. But this is how the society just works its thing. We don't pay attention to it. We just play in, we're just playing the game. So why do we then find it Many of us still find it really strange if the father wants to stay home. I mean, why is that so strange? And why does it become a normal thing like here in Iceland where there is an equal amount of, actually it's looked for the child has the uh, the right to be with both parents the first year of their lives so it's it's divided between the the parents and 
and if one part one person does not use it then it just drops down you the other one can't use it it's just here is six months for you and six months for the other um this has been the in my view the biggest step moving the needle or actually breaking the needle of gender equality uh, because nowadays it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman at a certain age going into the workforce um, assuming that you might go out uh, of the of the role for a month a couple of months or a year or whatever because you're starting a family it doesn't matter now if you're a man or a woman both both will, will take maternity leave and today it's just as normal to see dad strolling around downtown with her kids as it is to see mom strolling around downtown with her kids. So when the society, that becomes the norm in the society, it opens up space for, for dads to say, hey, I actually like this. I want to do more of that. How do I create my life so that I can be more with my kids? But when the society is judging you if you do that, it's less likely to do that, aren't you? Don't you think? Yeah, the question is how much does the society actually accept those choices? And I suppose, like with so many changes, it always takes time. But I suppose it's also a good initiative that a country like Iceland says, okay, six months and six months. And you can do with it what you want. And maybe today there are still certain areas where it's not accepted or not likely to be seen well that the father takes the same as the mother. But maybe in 10 years or in three years, it will be. And I think this is one of the positive changes that we can already see. And Runa, I had a question. What are other changes or areas of awareness that you are passionate about seeing and you may choose the time frame in the next three five n years and you may say for iceland or for our world in if i had a magic wand it would be that we would be more aware of our programs our unconscious programs and that we could laugh a little bit about them because they are funny they are really funny i find it i mean i find it really funny when i notice my programs and i notice that it maybe came from what my grandmother said to me when i was a little girl <laughs> And when I realized that <laughs> I've been, I've been following, I've been, I've been absolutely following, I've been accepting peer pressure from dead people. And although she might have said something to me at the time that was all oh, good intention, um, she probably got it by someone when she was about five and that person got it, you know, going back, going back, going back, going back. You know what I mean? So are we basically sleepwalking, following peer pressure from dead people? And at what time in our lives are we going to grow up and say, mm, that was a good advice at the time, but you know, it's not, it's not working for me anymore. Which again, spins back to awareness, right? To acknowledge traditions or to acknowledge what has happened a generation before us 10 generations before us but not blindly accepting it for face value and also accepting it for the present moment and the future yes and i would like us to be able to say because we all do this that when we realize that we have we've judged another person because of this uh, which we all do let's face it I still do, you know, I'm just a tiny more aware of it. But um, that when we, when we realized that we started to make assumption of someone because of how they look or what they're doing or whatever, that we can say openly, oh gosh, I'm so sorry, I think I, 
I misjudged you. Um, I, I was boxing you in. And, you know, can you, kind of like you, that you can go back and say, I apologize. Um, my program was hitting me hard here. Please tell me more about you. So that you give that person some, some space to, to share who they are and what they're here for. Um, I would like us to be able to do that. Um, and that is awareness. Being aware and aware enough. And this might be sound crazy for many. And I'm sure many of the audience here are going, she is an absolute nut at this one. And so be it. You know, there, and so, so who cares? I, you know, I just think we, we would feel better if we could acknowledge this. And it's okay to make mistakes. We all make it. And, but can we, you know, and we do this within, within the no more boxes movement. Um, we talk about, uh, correcting ourselves and rather than saying, well, you know how men are, we, we say, well, you know how some men are, or you know how some women are. And just use that four letter word, some, when we are boxing things in, uh, it just kind of like, it gives that some oxygen in that. Um, because I think, I think we, there's an energy to everything that we do and we are manifesting status quo if we don't change the way that we word, word things. The some, not all. And yeah, I like that notion a lot, in fact, Runa. And there are a couple of questions that I ask, in fact, all of my podcast guests at the end of an episode. But before we go there, Runa, is there a topic or are there areas that you think we haven't discussed in good detail today and that you would I've had so much fun on this Ismail I just I just hope that the audience have managed to be with us till this time if they have congratulations you did a good job listening so far <laughs> because we we we've, we've touched upon so many things and I know for so many people this is mind blowing this is you know the, the the number one thing that i hear people say is like oh this is so thought provoking uh when they go through this process of expanding their boxes uh but that's what if so if you are listening still listening well done well done you absolutely and it is thought provoking and i'm also having a lot of fun in this conversation and runa if people in fact would like to reach out, get to know more about yourself. How can they do that? The easiest way is to go on my website, runamagnus.com, R-U-N-A-M-A-G-N-U-S.com. And there is a contact form, let's talk and all of those things that you, they can just reach me directly. Absolutely. And I will, of course, make sure to link that in the podcast description as well. And yeah, with that, I have three last and final questions for my podcast guests. And Runa, the first one is, what is an important truth for you that most people don't know or talk about? That I'm just a little girl. Interesting. I like that one. Let's leave it there. Wonderful. The second question, Guna, is who are your mentors and whom do you, being a little girl, look up to? Oh, I've been so fortunate in my life to have wonderful mentors in my life. Um, my role model was my mom. And my mentors today are... Uh, are people that belong to the normal boxes, the transformational movement, Nicholas Haynes, Dr. David Paul in Australia, um, the people that are in the uh, network for transformational leaders, Marcia Martin, um, Gina uh, Lazenby, I can go on and on, uh, people that are really 
doing wonderful work in this world, making, making an impact, making a difference. Seems like you created yourselves a good tribe of mentors and inspire each other. That's wonderful. Thank you very much for sharing that, Bruna. And that brings me to the last and final question of today's podcast episode. And it's a rather hypothetical one. So I would like you, Runa, to imagine that you are traveling by yourself in space. And you do that actually for quite some time. Could be a couple of months or even years. And after all that solo travel, you encounter a human-like species. And they can only process three facts or three truths about humanity before they decide whether or not they want to get to know us. What do you tell them? That in space, there is no time. There's just space. That you can, in space, create, become whoever you want to become. And that <laughs> strange. The third thing is coming my way is has to do with humor, and somehow it doesn't really fit the space thing. But I'm just gonna allow it to come. And that is that you better enjoy not to take yourself too seriously in this life because you're never going to get out of it alive anyway. Runa, infinity, creation and humor. I really like that. And with that, thank you so much for being a guest on the Just Another Mindset. And if there is any final message that you have for the audience, it's all yours. Take the time to be yourself. Thank you. If you enjoy this podcast and learn from it, please feel free to share this episode with a friend or two and make sure to subscribe to the Just Another Mindset podcast on YouTube, Spotify and Apple Podcasts. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, please use the next 10 seconds to give the Just Another Mindset podcast a rating and know that you will help me to create more meaningful content like this and also that it will help other people to find this content and get inspired as well. If there is any future topic or guest that you would like to hear more about on the Just Another Mindset podcast, please let me know by leaving a comment on YouTube or sending a mail directly to contact at ishmaelwondergarten.com. And if nobody told you lately, be reminded that you are worthy, you matter, and you can achieve anything. Just another mindset.